Our Earth is a dynamic planet. Deep beneath our feet, immense forces are at work. These forces shape continents and build mountains. They also fuel volcanoes, which are like windows into Earth's fiery heart. But some volcanoes are different. They are far more powerful than we can easily imagine. They are the slumbering giants of our world. Imagine an explosion that dwarfs all human-made weapons combined. Picture a force of nature so immense it could alter the course of life on this planet. This is the realm of supervolcanoes. They are a testament to the Earth's incredible energy. These colossal entities are not mere figments of myth or Hollywood imagination. They are very real geological features. Their immense eruptions are exceedingly rare events, thankfully. But when they do occur, their impact is global. What exactly is a supervolcano? The term itself sounds dramatic, and it is, but in science we need precise definitions. The super in supervolcano refers specifically to the explosive power and the sheer volume of material ejected during an eruption. Scientists use a scale to measure the size of volcanic eruptions. This scale is called the Volcano Explosivity Index, or VEI. It ranges from VI0 for gentle eruptions up to VI8 for the most colossal explosions imaginable. A VEI-8 eruption is what we classify as a super eruption. These are incredibly rare and powerful. To earn the title super volcano, a volcano must have a history of at least one VEI-8 eruption. This means it has, in the past, ejected more than 1,000 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. Imagine a cube of rock and ash 10 kilometers long, 10 kilometers wide, and 10 kilometers high. This material includes ash, pumice, and gases blasted out with incredible force. Supervolcanoes often do not look like the classic cone-shaped mountains. Their past super eruptions typically result in the ground collapsing over the emptied magma chamber. This forms a vast depression in the landscape called a caldera. We are all familiar with the image of a regular volcano. Think of Mount St. Helens in the United States or perhaps Mount Vesuvius in Italy. These volcanoes can certainly be destructive. Their eruptions can cause significant local and regional damage. They can spew ash high into the atmosphere and send rivers of molten lava down their slopes. But supervolcanoes operate on an entirely different level of magnitude. Regular volcanoes often build up their characteristic cone shapes over many eruptions. Layers of hardened lava flows and volcanic ash accumulate over time. Their eruptions, while powerful, tap into smaller magma chambers beneath the surface. These magma chambers might be a few cubic kilometers in size. The eruptions can be dramatic, throwing ash plumes several miles high. They can affect air travel and local climates for short periods. Supervolcanoes, in stark contrast, are defined by their immense scale. Their magma chambers are vast, sprawling, underground reservoirs of molten rock. These chambers can take hundreds of thousands of years to fill. The pressure builds and builds until it becomes unbearable for the overlying rock. Super eruptions are not just theoretical possibilities. They are a documented part of our planet's geological history. One of the most significant and relatively recent super eruptions was that of Lake Toba. This colossal event occurred in what is now Sumatra, Indonesia. Approximately 74,000 years ago, Toba unleashed its fury upon the world. It registered as a VEI-8 event, the highest category on the Volcano Explosivity Index. Scientists estimate that Toba ejected around 2,800 cubic kilometers of volcanic material. Ash from this single eruption has been found across South Asia, the Indian Ocean, and even in Africa. The Toba eruption was so immense that the ground above its magma chamber collapsed, forming a massive caldera. Today, this caldera is filled by Lake Toba, one of the world's largest volcanic lakes. Many scientists believe the Toba super eruption had profound global consequences. The vast quantities of ash and sulfur dioxide hurled into the atmosphere likely caused a severe volcanic winter. Let us consider the chilling question. What if a supervolcano were to erupt today? The immediate vicinity, covering hundreds, perhaps thousands of square kilometers around the volcano, would be utterly annihilated. This zone would be buried under incredibly hot, fast-moving flows of ash, pumice and gas. These are known as pyroclastic flows. They incinerate everything in their path instantly. The eruption 
would inject an enormous cloud of volcanic ash and sulfur gases high into the stratosphere. This cloud, far larger than anything produced by a regular volcano, would be carried by global wind patterns. Within weeks, it would encircle the entire planet. This dense veil of aerosols would significantly reduce the amount of sunlight reaching the Earth's surface. The blocking of sunlight would trigger a dramatic and prolonged drop in global temperatures. This phenomenon is often called a volcanic winter. Average global temperatures could fall by several degrees Celsius, possibly as much as 5 to 10 degrees in some regions. This cooling effect could persist for many years, perhaps even a decade or more. The human and societal impacts of a modern-day super-eruption would be almost unimaginable. In the immediate blast zone, extending for hundreds of kilometers, the loss of life would be catastrophic. Millions could perish from the pyroclastic flows, heavy ashfall and associated earthquakes or tsunamis if the volcano is near a coast. The scale of this initial destruction would overwhelm any disaster response capability. Beyond the immediate devastation, the most significant global threat would be widespread famine. The volcanic winter, with its prolonged cold and reduced sunlight, would decimate agriculture across the entire planet. Crop failures would occur on an unprecedented scale. Livestock would perish. Fisheries would collapse. Food shortages would quickly become a critical global problem, leading to starvation and malnutrition for billions of people. Societies would be pushed to their absolute limits. Our modern interconnected world relies heavily on complex infrastructure. A super eruption would cripple these systems. Volcanic ash is highly abrasive and conductive when wet. It clogs jet engines, bringing air travel to a complete standstill worldwide. The threat of supervolcanoes is not confined to the distant past. Several such geological behemoths exist on Earth today. They are not currently erupting in a cataclysmic fashion, so we consider them dormant or sleeping. However, they are active geological systems, constantly monitored by scientists. One of the most well-known supervolcanoes is located in the United States, the Yellowstone caldera in Wyoming. Yellowstone has a history of three massive super eruptions. These occurred approximately 2.1 million, 1.3 million, and 630,000 years ago. Each of these eruptions was a VEI-8 event, blanketing vast swathes of North America with ash. The caldera left by the last eruption is enormous, measuring about 55 by 72 kilometers. It covers a large portion of Yellowstone National Park. The park's famous geysers and hot springs are a direct result of the heat from the massive magma chamber beneath. Another significant supervolcano that poses a considerable risk is Campi Flegre, located in Italy. Its proximity to millions of people makes it a serious concern. Scientists diligently monitor these sleeping giants. Faced with the colossal power of supervolcanoes, humanity is not merely a passive spectator. Scientists around the globe are actively engaged in studying and monitoring these immense geological systems. This is a complex and challenging endeavor. It requires a multidisciplinary approach using a wide array of sophisticated tools and techniques. The primary goal is to understand their behavior better and to detect any signs of potential reawakening as early as possible. One of the key methods for monitoring supervolcanoes is seismology. Networks of seismometers are deployed around these volcanic areas to detect ground vibrations. Even very small earthquakes, often too faint to be felt by humans, can indicate the movement of magma or fluids deep beneath the surface. Analyzing the patterns and locations of these tiny quakes can provide valuable clues about what is happening within the volcano's plumbing system. Another vital tool is ground deformation measurement. Scientists use highly precise global positioning system, GPS, stations and satellite radar interferometry, INSAR, to measure these subtle changes in the ground surface. These measurements create a dynamic map of the volcano's breathing. Supervolcanoes stand as a profound and humbling reminder of the immense natural forces that have shaped and continue to shape our planet. They represent one of the most powerful types of natural hazards known to humanity. We cannot prevent their eruptions. We cannot tame their colossal energy. Trying to do so would be like trying to stop the tide with a teacup. These are forces far beyond our current technological capabilities to control. 
However, this does not mean we are entirely helpless in the face of such a threat. Science provides us with the power of understanding. Through careful study and diligent monitoring, we can learn about the behavior of these giants. This understanding is the foundation upon which we can build preparedness strategies. We can develop emergency response plans. We can work to mitigate some of the potential global consequences such as food security and infrastructure resilience. The study of supervolcanoes also offers deeper insights into the fundamental workings of our Earth. It helps us understand the processes of plate tectonics, magma generation and crustal dynamics. It's a journey of continuous discovery.